General Motors just got a bunch of people, journalists, general public, basically Joe Blows, to come in and drive one of their Bolt EUVs, right? They got an insane range out of this car. In fact, they got the Bolt EUV to do 560 miles without charging on a single charge. This is the standard model, no changes to the car. So you can do 560 miles of range in your Bolt EUV. Now, here's the thing, though. General Motors is being very honest about how they did it. Transparent and honest. Very, very different to the way Mercedes have been making some outrageous claims about the range of their uh, concept EVs. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. It's great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Sam Evans. I'm the Electric Viking. Welcome to all the new subscribers to the channel. About 10,000 new subscribers recently. Great to have every single one of you and Patreon supporters, YouTube members. Thank you so much for supporting the channel and for supporting, hey, the electric car movement, renewable clean energy. That's what the channel is all about. And I love the Bolt and the Bolt EUV. A lot of people don't like that I do. I mean, they don't like General Motors and Chevy and fair enough. Um, they haven't exactly, you know, embraced electrification. They say they have, but in reality, not so much. But anyway, they do make the Bolt and the Bolt EUV, even though they are going to kill it off. I'm going to literally blow them all up. No, I'm kidding. They're not going to do what they did to the EV1. They're not going to recall them all and destroy them all. They're just going to stop production around about, I believe, October, November of this year. So if you want one of these cars, now's the time to go get one. They're very good value. And I highly doubt Chevy will be making many Equinoxes for the price of this car. The Equinox is going to replace the Bolt and the Bolt EUV. Uh, will it be affordable? Will it really cost 30,000 US dollars? Yeah, probably, but not for many. It'll probably make, you know, very limited amounts of that base model version. So this will be the cheapest car that EV GM will probably make for the next forever. This will be it. And it is actually great value. Will it do 560 miles of range? Well, yeah, actually, in theory, you could replicate what this car did, but you'd have a lot of angry people sitting behind you. Unless you were like literally in the middle of nowhere on a very smooth piece of road. Not easy to find those conditions. Now, that's exactly what Mercedes and other car companies have been doing when they're making these outrageous claims. Our new concept car did a thousand miles of range. We broke the world record. People don't realize that actually they're not being transparent about how they went about doing it. They do stuff like what GM, journalists, and the people who drove this car did to get this kind of range. And it actually shows you that those range claims from other brands, they're not as impressive as they sound. Because if the Bolt can do 560 miles of range, then, well, you see my point. Hypermiling is a really interesting way of driving an EV. This is how you get the maximum amount of range from your electric car. This test, though, took 28 hours and 37 minutes on a 2.7 mile round circuit. So just drove around and around in a circle for 28 hours. No, no, it's not actually true. They did have some breaks in between for new drivers to jump in, jump out, someone else would get in, someone else would get out. It's like a marathon, right? Anyhow, this driving test happened at GM's Campo de Provis circuit in Brazil. And you've got to admit, I mean, this is the EUV version of the car. It's amazing they did this kind of range, even hypermiling. I'm, I'm actually mind blown here. So the standard range of this car is 283 miles, meaning they almost exactly doubled the standard range. Amazing what you can do if you hypermile. Now, the incredible thing is here that 70 people were involved in this test. And it was actually monitored and audited by outside auditors. I don't know why they bothered with doing that, but they did. 70 people. Who were they? Journalists, influencers, customers, dealers, partners, GM employees, monkeys. Uh, no, no, there were no monkeys. Just kidding. Um, and they all took turns driving, all of them. That's a lot of drivers. So you can see from this test how you can get more range from your electric car, right? It had pretty much the perfect conditions to get the ideal range, right? Go around in a circle on a relatively short track, 2.7 miles at very, very low speed. Now you'd think that the ideal speed to go in an EV would be similar to a petrol car or a gasoline car, diesel car, which is around about 50 miles an hour. That's about your maximum, your best efficiency 
in a gasoline power car, 50 miles an hour on a flat road, no wind, or a tailwind would be even better. But yeah, you see my point here. But with an EV, it's not. So drivers were advised to avoid sudden acceleration and braking. Drivers were also instructed not to use air conditioning during the drive to get the most out of the battery. The average speed during the test was 22 miles an hour. Now, the problem is I can't actually verify if that's average speed, including drivers getting in and out. So if that's including, you know, the little break of someone getting in and out, or if that's just legitimately the car was only doing, what, 30 something kilometers an hour for the entire run. It maybe was, maybe that's why it took so long. Now to give you an idea on other cars that compete with this, the Kona, a Hyundai Kona Electric, that's a similar car to the Bolt EUV, more expensive, but it's similar. And that has a range of 304 miles using a 65.4 kilowatt hour battery. Now, obviously you could hypermile a Kona and I've got no idea what range you'd get. Maybe you could double the range of a Kona EV as well. Maybe you couldn't, I don't know. But either way, this is kind of an interesting test because it does give you an idea of what you should do in an emergency situation. Let's say you really were like in the middle of nowhere, just, in the, I don't know, somehow magically you happen to be in the desert or I don't know, somewhere where there's, you know, there's no electricity for a long, long time. I don't think that's very likely. I mean, really, you could just pull into someone's driveway and just say, hey, hey, can I pay you a hundred bucks to get some, use your, plug my car into your, your PowerPoint in your house. You can pretty much do that anywhere. It's really slow, but you're going to get some juice. You can't do that with gasoline, by the way. So that's one cool advantage of EVs. But let's just say there's none of that. There's no houses anywhere. You know what to do, right? Drive really slowly. Don't brake. Try not to fall asleep and um, you know, you'll probably get to wherever it is you're going, even if that place is a very, very long way away. Thank you for watching, my friends. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Bye-bye.